I have absolutely no idea how this video is going to come together, but I'm sure I'm going to be able to cobble something up because there is so much going on on the patio. Little gems, jewels and wonders happening. Things that I am seeing on the daily, that I appreciate on the daily. And well, here I am sharing it with you. So thank you so much for clicking on the video. It's good to have you on the patio. What you're looking at is the root system of my chow prior. And I have to tell you that these ruby root tips put a smile on my face every single time I go and mist and water this orchid. These root tips are just, I don't know, they just don't get old. And besides that, older roots are starting to show bumps in the velamen where there will be even more branching, be it further up the roots, but all the way down the whole gaggle of roots that is so tucked away. The bright pops of red, in my opinion, are an orchid's grower's dream. <laughs> Even though I see this several times a day for the past maybe six months when most of the little root tips started to pop out and they have continued growing, I just can't get enough of this. And for that reason, this video is opening up with what I just get all tickled about. Root tips, bumps on velamen, and velamen cracking open with branching. <laughs> Before I lose you completely and you click out of the video, let me show you my Lelia Kautskiana. She is a Rapiculus Lelia and her spike has managed to bloom out to a certain degree. Been very protective over this spike. <laughs> This orchid just loves the camera, so if there's anything out of focus in the motion clip, that is because of me and my currently a little bit shaky hands. I do apologize, but she does love the camera and I love this orchid so, so much. And while I leave you with some images of my beautiful Kautskiana, I'm just going to go and mosey over what's behind me and water my Vanda Hybrid No ID, which the fans that are branching from the sticks and the little, you know, the space, the gap, that you see. Those new little fans are progressing beautifully. They're going to fill that up a little bit to say that that space behind with the one fan that is now so tall and without leaves. Yeah, that gap was bothering me a little bit. It's just aesthetics, but I've got lots of little fans that are making their way through successfully. My weirdo Lucneri Blue also growing lots and lots of roots. I'm loving the progress on this orchid. So much fun. Absolutely not in my way whatsoever. And if you get an orchid that has some funky blooms well that's another reason to put a smile on your face because you never know what you're gonna get but my loose neary classic is also doing superbly lots of root growth got lots of branching going on which is amazing and well now with the three fans in that basket all fans are blooming size it's gonna be a glorious season i moved my ancelias off the top shelf of the west side shelf at the moment just to give them a little bit of respite we actually had some sunny days recently and it was kind of warm and there was no breeze so I was a little bit concerned about their welfare but here is a first time bloomer on his way which is my Kenya mud crossed with self and then the next blooming will happen with Joe crossed with puff adder so that'll be two out of the four Ancelias that I have I will show you the third one if you would be so kind to stick around for that and at this stage of my brief tour, I'm going to ask you to please subscribe to the channel because you do not want to miss out on the blooming of my Dendrobium of Film. This is going to be sensational. We still have a little ways to go. And for that reason, oh, please subscribe. You do not want to miss this. But you can also see what's looking like it's all caged in and behind some kind of a security door. That is my blooming alley. So we'll mosey on over there. And while we mosey on over there, would you also give this video a like? That would be greatly appreciated. I have my Blatia striata bowl in the blooming alley as an exception because we had the Sahara Desert blow over some of its precious dust. And well, my precious Blatia bowl was going to look nasty and this is the best blooming I've ever had. And besides, I get to see it every time I'm in the living room. But if we go up a little ways, I just want to show you another little cluster of Dendrobium of Film. We also have buds on those canes and they are a little bit more advanced. 
and so are the new growths a little bit more advanced astounding just a few feet away from each other and the two are behaving as if they don't even exist on the same patio but this little cluster is much closer to the building not as exposed and here we are i'm guessing it's approximately two weeks ahead of the mother plant which is astounding the best blooming ever of the dendrobium unicum is also ahead of us i have 10 spikes <laughs> Usually my blooms are always clustered right to the top of the cane. Now it's the entire cane that is filled with spikes. Excite, excite. And exciting as well, even though I don't have any buds or nubbins showing on my Dendrobium bensonii, there are already eight new growths accounted for. I got eight last year. I wonder if I'm asking too much to maybe get nine, you know? <laughs> Greedy orchid grower here. The bensonii has definitely bolted. <laughs> <laughs> out of the stables. <laughs> And I'm very happy to report that my zombie rhizome, we still have that single bud. It's a brassavola, that is for sure, but which one it is remains to be seen. So far, so good. However, there's more to report on this one now. I'm already getting two new growths on it, as well as new roots are also starting. This is just insane. <laughs> on top of that is my Hawaiara lava burst that has been in bloom for the past four weeks, maybe five. Nice little pop of red there. Next Next to her is my Dendrobium exili in bloom again. Who'd have thunk? So this one is now really mature enough to just say, okay, this part of the orchid is mature, let's bloom. This part of the orchid is mature, let's bloom. Always in intervals. Super exciting development on that one. I still have Lelia Harpophila in bloom. She has been holding the fort in my blooming alley all these months during the winter. It's just been wonderful with this orange, but now she's got company because look at this. This is my Lelia Flava. She didn't bloom for us last year in 2023. Well, I shall just forgive her for that because she has come out with quite, quite the stonking spike with plenty of blooms. Gorgeous, gorgeous. I love it. But let me just report back to you about my Lelia Kolnagoi because remember she was a first time bloomer this year and yes, her bloom did collapse and I was like wondering, okay, first time bloomer woes? No, I can confirm. A pollinator came, found that gorgeous orange color and said, <laughs> I'm having me some of that. She's producing a seed pod, which I am taking off. I just wanted to show you the reason for the collapse. You know all that with the first time blooming woes, the first bloom may not open or have a color problem. Well, well, that was not the case with my Kolnagoi, but I am not letting this orchid produce a seed pod. That's not happening. I may just protect the next bud with a little bit of one of those gauze gift baskets <laughs> just to make sure the bloom opens and doesn't get interfered with. <laughs> Underneath though, the guanze is starting to open up. At least I have three buds there. Should one get pollinated, we may just get lucky enough to see this one come into bloom for the first time. Dendrobium tortile is all of a sudden busting its moves and the buds are starting to show. I have 15 spikes in total this year, which if my memory doesn't fail me, last year we had seven. So the blooming this year is gonna be double fun and double impressive. Making sure that the Blooming Alley is living up to its name, Dendrobium nobili variae cooksonianum and my no ID are holding up beautifully in the cul-de-sac and oh my goodness, the fragrance in this little area. It's just, <laughs> what else can I fuss with so that I can appreciate it? <laughs> All the orchids that I have on the shelves, they've all been dealt with, but <laughs> I'm in there like going double checking, triple checking my Rapiculus Lelias because it's just a heady, heady fragrance of the freesia from the No ID combined with the rose of the Cooksonianum. And then I've got four blooms on my Cattleya Maxima. Add a little bit more of an elegant rose uplifting fragrance. And it's just, ooh, trifecta gorgeousness in that corner. <laughs> I love it. A small little happening on the top shelf of the Blooming Alley is my Dendrobium Memoria Krista Erdmann coming into Spike single. I was hoping for two or three. Last year we had three spikes. I think one of them was munched off, maybe two. I don't know. I was hoping for three again, but nope. We will hopefully be able to maintain the spike to at least be able to appreciate those frilly, sparkly, magical, fairy-like fried egg looking blooms. Amazing. Not very long lasting, but amazing. So I'm just going to scoot over to the east side where I want to show you my Fires Tunkenbillier. 
it is now starting to show the buds and it is ant free which i'm working very hard towards meaning of course then the ants don't bring the aphids as in one season which was just horrific anyway looking marvelous behind me though i can hear somebody almost being able to reach and poke my back and say hello hello tapping me on the shoulder is stanhopia acidensis holding the fort keeping vigil over the east side guarding that space but very very soon he is not going to be alone so as per usual i'm so excited to get that west shelf rack over onto this side it's going to be such a relief not quite there yet soon hint hint nudge nudge please subscribe thank you before we head back over and yes like i said cobble together patio tour and we're going zigzag anyway aska centrum ampoyathea pink dreamer still in gorgeous bloom no aphids this year it was wonderful to be able to appreciate these blooms without having to share them with aphids but anyway what i want to really show you is the little cakey that is forming at the base i'm really protective over this one and look it's still with us and on top of that it is growing two roots and they are going in the pot at least i really want to get them to grow into the lecker because maybe if all goes well this little cakey with her root system will support the mother plant eventually because the root system of the Ascacentrum Ampoyathea. Mm. As she grows, she's getting harder and harder to hydrate. So that little cakey is being protected. <laughs> Every time I water this orchid, I cup my hand over it just to make sure that no water drips onto the little crown. So speaking of the orchid shuffle, yes, <laughs> the Deep South is somewhat prepared space-wise, you could say, for the Angrecoids that are coming out to have their glam camping season in that corner. I have so much work to do. So much prep work to do and I am dreading it. I'm not doing it in this video but I have to clean that corner up and make sure that the, at least I can try and get some roots into the fence, into the hedge there and then I have to clean all of this, all the top row as well. I'm procrastinating because I'm thinking well I'm gonna do it when I've moved the shelf over to the east side then I've got space but you know how it is? Yeah well why aren't you doing the side that doesn't have the shelf? <clears throat> Don't ask me, I wouldn't know how to answer that question. <laughs> I want to say a very special thank you to Michael McCarthy. I was showing my Padangus dactylotheras in another little patio tour and I was very concerned for its welfare. It was extremely shriveled. He suggested to put the mount into a bucket. I can't do that but I had one route that I could actually make reach water without you know anything happening around the stem. Just look at how this orchid has plumped up. Oh Michael thank you so so much for that tip. I was thinking it was the cold it was dehydrated. Thankfully, there is one root that actually curls around the left side of the mount that I could have in water 24 7. Can you believe it? So, yeah, I might have to readdress how this orchid needs to be hydrated. I don't want to lose this, but thank you, Michael. My podangas has plumped up, and it's all thanks to you. I appreciate it. And with that, I'm going to show you my third out of four Ancelias that I have. This is my Buffalo Cross with Leo. Look at this. I'm gonna cry. I'm gonna cry when I see such beauty. I just cannot. I just cannot. It is absolutely outstanding, the longevity of these blooms. Their fragrance isn't exactly anything to write home about. There's a little bit of sweetness in this fragrance with this orchid, but there's more of a dusty note to it than, you know, a pleasant thing but I love a dusty note that reminds me of the safaris in Kenya where all the red dust would just blow into the van and then <laughs> you have it all up your nose that's what I'm smelling here so it's a very nostalgic fragrance that I absolutely adore and never mind the colors what a spike this is the second time this orchid is blooming for us and well I have no words and that is not quite true. I do have some words. I want to say thank you so, so much for watching. And I wish you a beautiful day on the condition, though, please, that you stay safe. Take care. Bye.